Geometry is the foundation of a mountain bike, allowing the rider and bike to work in harmony to tackle off-road terrain. But how do you make sure that your bike's geometry is right for you? Well, I'm going to show you how to change your geometry to suit the tracks you ride and your riding style. Most modern mountain bikes offer adjustments which allow you to alter the geometry. I'll explain how these work, why you should adjust them, and how you can modernize your geometry even if you don't have a fancy new bike. Like this one. Right, let's get started, shall we? Geometry is important. Modern mountain bikes have reached the point where they ride fantastically and take off-road terrain in their stride. In fact, I looked at whether we've reached peak geometry in this video. However, the chances are your modern mountain bike has some adjustability built in to modify the geometry. But unless you're a knowledgeable tech wizard, you may be wondering what they do and why to bother with them. Well, nailing the correct geometry for your body and your riding style can make a world of difference to how much you enjoy your time on the bike, even if it's only a degree here or a millimetre or two there. I'm going to focus on adjusting the head angle, reach, chainstay length and bottom bracket height. Let's start by examining the head angles. The head angle is the steepness of the steering axis. It alters the angle at which the fork is attached to the bike. A bike's head angle is dictated by the position which the head tube is fixed in the frame. The slacker the head angle is, the more laid back the fork is and the more stable the handling of the bike. A bike with a slacker head angle is less affected by bumps hitting the front wheel and less prone to pitching forwards. It will change direction more slowly with a calmer steering response. But that means a slower response to cornering inputs and it will be more difficult to weight the front wheel, which is important for generating traction. Reach is the horizontal distance from the centre of the bottom bracket to the centre of the head tube here. It's the measurement that helps dictate how a bike feels when you're stood up on the pedals. And reach is one of the most important measurements when choosing which size mountain bike to buy. A longer reach means more stability and more room for throwing your body around. The downside of long reach is the bike's slower response to your inputs and the need for more body movement in order to control the bike. Whereas a reach which is too short means you'll feel cramped on the bike when you're standing up on the pedals and it can feel like you're always too far over the front or rear of the bike instead of sitting comfortably in between the wheels. Chainstay length is the distance between the centre of the bottom bracket axle and the centre of the rear wheels axle. Shorter chainstays make bikes easier to manual and more playful in corners but longer chain stays mean stability when climbing and calmer handling, particularly when cornering. And finally, bottom bracket height, which is the distance between the centre of the bottom bracket axle and the floor. Lower bottom bracket heights mean more stability when travelling in a straight line, and plus it can feel more confidence inspiring in turns. But if you go too low, it can lead to pedal strikes when pedalling over rough terrain. Taller bottom bracket heights mean it's easier to initiate a turn as you can tip the bike into a corner with less effort. However, a tall bottom bracket can also feel less stable as you're riding high above the bike like a penny farthing instead of standing in the bike. Phew! So these are your main geometric considerations. So how do you adjust them and how do you know which positions are right for you? Why are you stood like that? I don't know, you told me to. <laughs> Headset cups are those parts of the frame which house a bearing for your fork to rotate around, enabling you to steer. Adjustable headset cups have holes which are drilled off-center to the outside diameter of the cup. Because of this, they can be used to change either the reach of the bike or the head angle. Reach adjust headsets, often called offset headset cups, move the fork forwards or rearwards inside the head tube to lengthen or shorten the bike's reach. If your bike feels too cramped when you're out of the saddle, you may want to fit reach adjustment cups to lengthen the reach. Conversely, if you're too stretched out, you may want to bring those handlebars back towards you by fitting headset cups which reduce the reach of your frame. Angle changing headsets, often referred to as angled headset cups, they change the angle at which the fork pivots in your frame. An offset machined angled seat for your headset bearings exaggerates or reduces the angle of the frame's head tube to steepen or slacken the head angle of your bike. 
To fit adjustable headset cups, you'll need to check that your bike will accept them by looking up the diameter of your frame's head tube and the fork steerer tube. And check that fitting them won't void your frame's warranty. Then you need to remove your existing cups with a fantastically named rocket tool and press the new cups into place with a headset press. Which setting should you choose? Well, if your bike feels sluggish and you like to ride flatter terrain, then you may want to steepen your head angle. If your bike feels twitchy or you ride steep, gnarly terrain, you may want to slacken the head angle. Flip chips in the frame seat stays link or on the shock mount can change the bottom bracket height of a full suspension frame, as well as the head and seat tube angles at the same time. On some frames, you can avoid the alteration of your head angle when flipping the chip by using offset headset cups to change your head angle at the same time. But you're stuck with any change to the seat tube angle. Anyway, I digress. Flipping one of these chips can raise or lower your bottom bracket height by a few millimeters and steepen or slacken your head angle by around half a degree, depending on the size and orientation of the chip. On the Giant Trance, for example, flipping the Maestro flip chip changes the BB height by 10 mil and the head angle and seat angle by 0.7 degrees. If that sounds confusing, don't worry, as most manufacturers will put instructions to follow online and even helpfully put directions on the frame which show which way is higher and which way is lower. So, if your bike is feeling twitchy or you feel like you're not in the bike enough, you could try lowering your bottom bracket height. If you find hitting your pedals on the floor is an issue or you're struggling to get the bike turned into corners, you could try raising the BB height. Inserts where the rear axle bolts into the frame can often be swapped to change the length of your chainstays by decreasing or increasing the distance between the center of your bottom bracket and the center of your rear axle. Flipping an eccentric insert can change the chainstays from the short setting to the long setting, or you can even change the length of your chainstays in increments using different sized inserts. Some bikes like Nikolai's G1 use bolt-on mutator chips, which you can order in different sizes to change the chainstay length. And these all come in pairs, of course. If it feels laborious to lift the front wheel or your bike feels lethargic in corners, you could try shortening your chainstays. Whereas if your bike feels twitchy or you feel like you're at risk of looping out, you could try lengthening your chainstays. These are the most common ways frame manufacturers use to allow you to alter the way your bike rides without having to have a whole new frame custom welded. But there are some other ways to change the geometry of your bike, even if it doesn't come with fancy cups and chips built in. Eccentric bottom brackets are offset bottom bracket mounts which fit into the hole in your frame. They can be used to raise or lower the bottom bracket height or adjust the chainstay length or a combination of those two things. Bear in mind though they won't fit every frame out there even though there are a plethora of options depending on your BB shell your frame has and which cranks you use. But they're really cool though, I definitely want one. More common is offset shock mounting hardware, sometimes called offset bushes. If you have a full suspension bike, you can fit these to many shocks to shorten the effective eye to eye length of the shock. These are cheap and cheerful and they were all the rage before the longer lower slacker phenomenon took off. It allowed riders of older bikes with geometry that they thought was too high and steep to adjust their bottom bracket height and head angle in one easy step. Limitations of offset shock hardware though are that you may void your frame warranty and you'll have to confirm that you have enough clearance between moving parts of your frame and also your tire to check that they're safe to use. Angle changing and reach adjustable headset cups are available to fit generic head tubes, not just specific frames. Companies like Works Components in the UK offer fitments for different head tubes and steerer tubes. They even make their team riders a custom built headset which adjusts the reach and angle of their frames at the same time. Well that's just for them, you can't buy those. For some frames, custom links are available, like those from Cascade Components, which can change the geometry of your bike and even allow the fitment of a different size rear wheel. They're really useful if you want to go for a mullet setup on your Cannondale Jekyll, for example, increasing the travel and progression ratio of the rear shock at the same time. So there you have it, how to adjust your geometry. Just one tip to bear in mind before I leave you though, Adjust each thing in isolation. It's difficult to keep track of how the feel of the bike has changed if you change more than one thing at a time. For example, if you change your head angle, ride for a bit to get the feel of the bike before you change chainstay length. Oh, 
And if you're planning on adding any aftermarket components designed to adjust the geometry of your current bike, be sure it doesn't void the manufacturer's warranty or cause any damage to your precious steed. So, happy tinkering. I hope I've given you some food for thought. Let me know in the comments the next thing that you're going to change on your bike. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and make sure to subscribe because we've got plenty more videos coming. But if you want another right now, check out this video on geometry. Limitations of offset shock hardware though are the... <laughs> I'm like Sean Connery over here. Right, let's try again, fantastic. <laughs> Junior. Go out and come back in again. Oh, I'm Russian. Is he Russian, Sean Connery? <laughs>